I'm just really glad to see everyone here celebrating entrepreneurship and inventorship. So let's get it started. Have fun. It's a combination of invent and adventure. We are trying to provide the resources, the structure, and the incentives for our very, very best inventors on campus to, to flourish. We run a series of classes, we call it the Inventure School, to help them get ready for this. This is an unteachable subject, so we create a situation in which the, teacher, in which the students can teach themselves. We wanted in the beginning to just say, you got a good idea, you got something that excites you, and something that's fun, tell us about it, and uh, compete in this competition. The whole university is set up to make them become great engineers and great members of society. But they want to know, how do you create something from nothing? How do you go make a startup? How do you make an invention that can actually change the world? The organizers came up with five criteria that would be important to become uh, the winner of the Georgia Tech Inventor Prize. Uh, the invention has got to be innovative. It's got to be marketable. There's got to be a big market size for it. They've got to have a high probability of success. And last but not least, they've got to bring their passion on stage. There's the sense that you, you enter this contest and there's one prize or there's two prizes at the end, but that's not what's important. What's important is you go through this series of steps as a person that entered this and you learn in every single step. The ideal winner to me is someone who has something really clever, really innovative, something that people can look at and say, why didn't I think of it? Let's get right to it. Let's start meeting the inventors, find out who's going to win the Georgia Tech Inventor Prize for 2010. First up, five friends got together to solve a problem that claims a lot of lives every year. It's a serious problem. Let's meet Team Eagle Eye. We're Team Eagle Eye. We made a headset that detects brain waves to prevent drowsy driving. Picture this. You're driving and you start to get tired. In fact, you're fighting the urge to fall asleep. Luckily, you get home safely, but what if you're one of the 1,500 people who die every year because they couldn't stay awake? Well, any driver could use it. Imagine the peace of mind you would have knowing that the eagle eye will never let you fall asleep behind the wheel. And now, there we go. And now let's go to David. Go ahead. Right, this is a very serious problem. Uh, for this to work, you're going to have to have an absolute 100% reliable connection to your brain at all times. It requires an electrical connection. Fortunately, hair is a terrific insulator. And actually, even in an EEG lab, oftentimes they have a hard time making sure that there's an excellent connection. How do you overcome this problem? Miles, I'm here with one of uh, uh, Eagle Eye's friends. This is Beejil, is that correct? So Beejil, um, as a woman, would you wear a cap like that to prevent you from uh, falling asleep behind the wheel? I would, and they also designed the headset keeping women in mind so that it doesn't spoil their hair. So it doesn't ruin our hair? No. Okay. I've actually tried it on, it actually works. Well then, we have to support that, right? Yes. Okay. Well, and if you are a fan of Eagle Eye at home or here in the audience, make sure you text 0001 for the People's Choice Award, and the phone number will be coming up at the end of the show. One drum, one sound. Let's put some engineering, creativity, and maybe a little pep into it. fans are, Sarah. They're definitely here. Yeah, you know, they, um, they were going to bring a whole car out, but it was a Toyota. It got away. My name is Quinn Lai, and I invented the Memory Booster, which is a flashcard organization system that schedules your study so they can study more efficiently. The IP part is going to protect a system that organizes flashcards and allow the application of a schedule. So it can be any kind of schedule. I'm Patrick Willey, and I invented weighted clothing. I thought of it uh, when I was a real little kid. Uh, I just wanted to have some sort of clothing that I could wear throughout the day um, that would add weight to my body, to where I could work out throughout the day. 
you've clearly demonstrated that you can generate demand. I think the challenge in this business is the supply side yep. and how you manage the financial implications of whether it's offshore sourcing, yep. where this gets made, and then your channel strategy. I hate this foam koozie. My drink still heats up. Why don't you just use a cooler or a mini fridge? No, then I have to get ice every time I want a cold one. I have to lug that thing around. This is the problem, in addition to some terrible acting. So I look at this and I kind of think, you're kind of competing with a bucket of ice, right? So the, the problem's already kind of been solved. Now is the time to hear from all of you. Uh, you can get your uh, cell phones out and out if you want, if you're here in the audience or at home. Uh, the People's Choice voting is now open. Who's going to win the People's Choice Award? <laughs> Patrick and Omega Wear! <laughs> the People's Choice! Congratulations! There you go, pal. <laughs> Judges, um, you, uh, I assume you've come to a decision.